And this video is going to be how to wash sand. I've written an article about this, but everyone likes to see things in a video. So I decided to clean out my four-year-old refugium. It had built up with tons of detritus. There was a whole bunch of sediment built up on those four to six inches of sand, and it had to be cleaned out manually. There was no easy way to do this, so here's the process. I removed all of the existing macroalgae and put it in a bucket so I could rinse it clean in some used tank water. And then I pumped out all the water with a maxi jet from the refugium into buckets and dumped them out down the driveway until I got down to the sand itself. Then all I did was scoop and scoop and scoop using a large plastic cup, as you can see, to get all this disgusting sand so out So when of is here. it the right time to do such a process? In a refugium, you might want to do it every couple of years. I find that this is an area of low flow and it is easy for detritus to build up. Another reason to rinse out sand is if you're setting up the tank anew. Like you bought a used setup, it's been running for several years and you're bringing it into your home, or you bought a used setup and you want to use some of it, the sand, if it's over six months old, you should pull it out, rinse it out completely, because you don't want all the trapped detritus in your brand new I'd setup. I'd also like to recommend that if you are moving a used tank, take all the sand out of it first, unless it's maybe an inch. If it's just very shallow, then that's okay. But the extra sand sitting inside the tank is weight and it could cause the bottom of the aquarium to crack. Plus it makes it harder for the people helping you carry the tank. What I'm doing here at this point is scraping the refugium clean of all the uh, vermitids and the calcifications and algae that have been building up over the last four years. And I just wanted to get it nice and clean and, and new looking for me. To do this right, you need to do it outside. You need a garden hose, you need a nozzle on the end that gives you that nice jet, spa jet type blast, and you are going to really kick up the sand to get all this waste out of there. Now this video is kind of long through here, but I'm hoping you're not going to skip ahead because I am going to talk about things and hopefully keep you slightly entertained. Also, I'm going to put a prize in this section because I haven't done that, and I'm really excited with how the YouTube channel is going, so please listen up. Basically, I recommend filling the bucket about one third of the way with sand, maybe as much as halfway, but no more. You just can't take on that much sand at once. And then get your garden hose turned on full blast. Uh, if you can lock the handle into position so you can submerge the nozzle deep into the sand and basically plunge it into the sand over and over, this will keep kicking up the detritus. Now what you're seeing is I lean the bucket over to pour off the sediment on top the sand is heavy enough that it'll stay down inside the bucket. You may lose a few grains, but the majority, I would say 95 to 98% of your sand will stay in that bucket. During this process, as you're constantly kicking it up and trying to get all that waste to come to the surface, you may come across snail shells, bits of coral, bristle worms, uh, who knows, whatever was in your aquarium or in the person's aquarium that you bought this used sand from, there could be stuff in there. So you kind of want to be careful. Maybe you could wear gloves, but then you can't really feel what's happening. It's totally up to you. I just do a lot of visual inspection during this process. Basically, it will take about 10 minutes per bucket for you to get the sand completely clean. But when you're done, it'll look white and beautiful, like it just came from a beach in Fiji, and it's totally safe to reuse. Sand is basically just little tiny grains there's nothing that goes bad with it. It doesn't spoil, it doesn't rot. Uh, one caveat, if you come across a really black sulfuric zone in used sand, scoop that part out and throw it away. I don't think you're gonna be able to get that stuff cleaned out. I think that part's shot. Now the sand I'm washing out right here is Tropic Eden Reef Flakes, and it comes from Premium Aquatics. I bought cases and cases back in 2010. I had a pallet delivered for the 400 gallon. And the grains are a little bit larger. If you have oolitic sand, which is the super fine sand, it tends to be more dusty and you may lose some during the rinsing process. I prefer a slightly heavier sand so the flow in my tank won't send it flying everywhere and keeps it down on the substrate where I want it. As you can see, the water isn't nearly as murky as it was before. And there's about an inch to two inches of water on top of the sand right now in this exact frame and I'm pouring out just that excess. You just keep constantly stirring and lifting and bringing it to the top, and you can flush out little bits of algae, whatever it is you've come across. If you have a lot of sand to rinse out, this could be kind of backbreaking work. 
you're bent over, you're hunched over this bucket, you're working in it, like I said, about 10 minutes per batch of sand. And, you know, you might want to take some Tylenol later <laughs> to relieve your lower back. Maybe, maybe you're fine. I have back problems, so I had to. But this is an economical way to reuse sand. And I've done it many times over the years. I believe this is probably the third time. I did it once under my 280 gallon reef many years ago when the refugium was in the very back of the sump. And I thought, oh, it's a great place to put it. It's out of my way. I'm not really staring at it anymore. At that point in the hobby, I kind of was over looking into the refugium late at night. But when I had to scoop that sand out from the back of a sump, leaning across a huge section, oh, that was a tough one. And I wanted to wash it out that time because I had so much cyano growing in there and it was just hideous. And I figured the best way was to get everything out of the refugium, clean all the walls, pump out the water, you know, the, all the rinse water, because I dragged a garden hose into my fish room and just rinsed it out and then shop backed all the water out of the refugium zone and refilled it with nice clean sand. I remember all the plants, the macroalgae, I had feather calerpa. I, matter of fact, I've had feather calerpa forever. It's the one algae that grows really well for me. And that's the plant you'll see under my tank anytime you see videos. So the feather calerpa was filled with cyano. So I pulled it all out and I put it in a bucket. And then I had a bucket of salt water next to it. And I lifted the uh, plants out and I immersed them and shook them off in the salt water. And then that water turned red. So I had another bucket. I think I had five buckets in a row of salt water. And I kept immersing and shaking off and then going to the next bucket and going to the next bucket until the water was crystal clear. Uh, that was quite a process, but I was using tank water from a water change. I had 55 gallons of water to play with, so it didn't matter. And that got the algae completely clean of cyano. I put in the nice clean sand into my refugium. I put the plants back in place, filled it up with salt water during the water change, and that zone was completely cleaned out. That one was about two years old when I did it, and uh, I didn't have to do it twice. This process here, I just, it was just disgusting and my nitrates had really risen high on my reef. And when I say high, I mean I measured and it was 180 ppm with an API kit. And I was shocking because, you know, a few weeks earlier they were measuring seven and something happened in my reef that I never could explain and the nitrates shot up. So my assumption was that what had happened was all this crap building up in the refugium over all these years had finally hit the tipping point and it was just releasing everything into the water. So the first step was clean out this refugium zone completely, scoop out all the sand, get rid of all the detritus, rinse off the plants, reset it, and let the deep sand bed in that section start denitrifying again. And I believed that that would help immensely. All right, I mentioned that there'd be a contest during this part of the video. And what I'm going to do, I wanna thank you guys for subscribing. Uh, I've got a couple of things you have to do to enter in this contest. It's pretty easy. You have to like this video and you need to comment on YouTube under the video about what you think. It can be about anything. You, matter of fact, you can ask me questions about future videos if you like. You can comment on this process and if you have a better solution to washing out sand, I'm fine with that. As soon as this video is released, the clock is going to start and you have 72 hours to post a comment under the video on the YouTube channel. You got to be a YouTube member. It's not hard create an account, and you can comment below. And then two people will be drawn for one of these really cool beer glasses, which if you're not a drinker, you can fill it with root beer or iced tea or chocolate milk. If you're a beer drinker, you could put in Shiner Bock. If you like other types of drinks, it could be Angry Orchard, whatever you like. And bonus karma points to anyone that shares this video online with others so that they too can be able to rinse out their sand successfully and set up their tank with a nice clean substrate. Mm-mm, good. How easy is that? You didn't have to even do anything. Good luck, guys. So as you can see, I'm pretty much done. I've, I'm really stirring it around with my hand. I'm digging down to the bottom of the barrel and what should we say? I'm fluffing it to make any possible detritus come to the surface and just get the last of it out of there. Because when I'm all done, I'm gonna wanna pour this right back into my tank and use it. Now, one concern you might have is, well, you're using tap water. God knows what's in tap water and that's gonna hurt your reef. But when you pour all the water out of the bucket, you're essentially gonna have damp sand. You're not gonna have wet soaking sand. It's something that you can put in your tank. A little bit of water is gonna be fine. You're not gonna hurt your reef. 
If you're extra cautious, you could add a little bit of prime to the setup, but I just don't think it's necessary. When I had set up the uh, 400 gallon for the second time, because as you guys know, I had a leak and I had to wait for the tank to be rebuilt and then I reset it up back in 2013, I had to rinse out about 450 pounds of sand. And you know, it took me a few hours and then I put all that sand back in the tank. It was damp. And then I added my RO water and then, you know, or I guess it was RO and salt water, of course. And I got the tank cycling again and it was perfect. I had no issues whatsoever. So don't fear tap water when it comes to this. You don't need to rinse it with RO water. You don't have to leave it laying out on a tarp in the sun to dry out for a couple of days. Just pour off as much of the water as you can. And then you can put it right back into the aquarium that you're setting up. Another quick story. This happened when I first set up the 400 for the first time back in 2011. As I was pouring in my sand, I was doing it very carefully with a bucket, but the metal handle was scraping the front glass of my tank and put a scratch on it. Oh my God, brand new tank, hasn't even had a livestock yet, and I just put a big scratch on my glass. So what I did when I refilled the 400 the second time, all the sand that I rinsed out, I put it in those uh, 13 gallon trash bags like you use for the kitchen trash you know those disposable white bags I put in enough sand you know, I don't know whatever a, a half a bucket holds that went into a bag it made every bag heavy but then I could carry the bag into the house not drip anything anywhere and I could lower it in the tank because it's a plastic bag and it didn't take it didn't risk scratching the tank whatsoever I felt completely safe putting in bag after bag after bag of sand into my tank and then of course, you know, I tossed out all the bags, but I did never scratch my tank again. Now, if you are just gonna wash out the sand and not use it at all, I kind of think you probably do need to dry it out. I don't believe you could keep it in bags and not have it just sit there and ferment in the bags and get moldy and basically spoil. So if you are trying to wash out for a future reef because you're moving homes and it's gonna be a while, you probably should dry it out thoroughly and then pack it in bags when it's dry and it'll be ready for your next setup. So I'm kind of smiling to myself right now because I'm realizing that you have just sat through 12 minutes of me washing out sand. <laughs> That's okay, I lived it, why shouldn't you? And this is just one bucket. I did a whole bunch of sand for you know the purpose of my refugium, but I only shared this one bucket with you in this video. My best friend told me to shorten this section, to cut out parts to put a timer on the screen but i just feel like you need to see what's involved just so you know exactly what to expect when you're doing it yourself and that way it's not a surprise and it doesn't take forever you just know this is how long it takes to wash out sand but i mean if you don't want to do this you could throw it all away and you could go buy new bags of sand from your fish store and start your tank that way me i prefer to save money and just get to it so here's a bristle worm that I saw in the driveway. He probably got flushed out because I didn't get stung. But the bristles are still there, whether he's alive or dead. To rinse out the macroalgae, all I did was dunk it up and down inside some used tank water. So here's the clean algae, there's the dirty water. And check out this shop vac. That's called a bucket vac that you can get at Home Depot. And for 20 bucks, you can snap that thing on most five gallon buckets. This is a three gallon bucket I'm using. And it allows me to clean out my sump when I need to. And as you can see, I just got all the waste out of the bottom of the refugium. And now it's ready to be rinsed out completely, wiped down, maybe touch up a little bit more where I missed it and start putting the sand back in. Since this sump is made of acrylic, I'm being very careful not to scratch the cup that's covered with sand grains against the front panel of the sump. No reason to mess up the surface during a cleanup. So the sand, as you can see, is nice and pristine. There might be a few little tiny things, and if I found those during the scooping, I just tossed them out. And I just used every bit of the sand to reset the refugium the way it was previously. But now it's nice and clean. By the way, if you'll notice right above the refugium zone, there is like a black acrylic bar and then some gray foam. This is what I use to create shade between the refugium zone and all the equipment behind it. Also, the light is on a pulley system that lifts it up out of my way when I need to work, but when it's normally in position, it's lower. It's equal with that black acrylic shield that you can kind of see there. So it brings it down to be about four inches over the top of the refugium zone. 
I refilled the, that zone with water from the reef. I basically opened up that final Durso so now water could drain down to this compartment and put the macroalgae back into place. I'm wearing gloves because I know there are bristle worms inside the macroalgae. If you do get stung by a bristle worm, which happens, the easiest solution is to submerge that stung area in a small cup of white vinegar. And if you'll just keep that fingertip or thumb or whatever it is you stung, your palm, in white vinegar for five minutes, the bristles will completely dissolve and you'll have no more sting. You don't have to worry about duct tape or needle nose pliers or anything like that. Just let the white vinegar do the task. I spread out the algae to help promote new growth and I wiped everything down and I lowered the light. The sheets of black foam are available at stores like Hobby Lobby or Michael's and they're about the size of a placemat and they cost 99 cents each. So it's a dirt cheap shade solution to trapping light in the zone where you want it and away from the rest of your equipment so you don't grow nuisance algae inside your reactors. So here's the final product after we're working on this for a couple of hours. The algae, of course, over time will completely spread out left to right and fill in this area. And then from time to time, I'll pull some out to help remove some nutrients from the system. And now you know how to do this. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and don't forget to enter the contest.